Members of the House Judiciary Committee, thank you for the opportunity to appear before you to discuss the criminal trial of former President Donald Trump, held before Judge Juan Marchand in New York County Supreme Court criminal term earlier this year. As you may be aware, I served as a criminal court judge in and for both Kings County and Bronx County, New York City, from 2005 to 2014. For five years of my term, I served as a night court arraignment judge in Kings County, where I was designated an acting Supreme Court Justice. Before my election to the bench in 2004, I served as an assistant district attorney in Bronx County and as a criminal defense attorney. Although I never tried a felony case as a judge, I tried a number of felony cases as defense counsel, including homicides, child molestation, drug sales, etc. I was involved in all phases of criminal litigation for approximately 30 years. I have sat in all three seats, prosecutor, defense counsel, and judge. I do not personally know Judge Juan Marchand, but I am intimately familiar with New York County Supreme and Criminal Court, having spent most of my career in those courtrooms. Based on my experience, I can tell you in no uncertain terms that former President Trump did not receive a fair trial from Judge Juan Marchand. In fact, if the Court of Appeals is fair, and I believe the Court will be fair based upon the reversal of Harvey Weinstein's illegal conviction, Donald Trump's conviction is assured reversal, a reversal that would be premised upon the fundamental errors committed by Judge Juan Marchand. If I may be blunt, Donald Trump was railroaded, and Juan Marchand was the driver of that train. For the purpose of this statement, I would like to concentrate on the most glaring problems presented by Judge Marchand's conduct of this trial. I believe the following. One, the indictment was legally insufficient, and Judge Marchand should have dismissed the indictment before trial. In my book, The Making of a Martyr, an analysis of the indictments of Donald Trump, I wrote that my review of the New York County indictment revealed that Donald Trump was accused of causing a false entry to be made in his business records for the purpose of concealing or committing another crime. What other crime? The indictment does not say. Simply put, how was former President Trump to prepare a defense if he is not informed of the other crime he intended to commit or conceal when he allegedly falsified his business records? Judge Mershon was obligated to dismiss an indictment that failed to identify the underlying crime. Number two, the failure to dismiss the indictment led to charges being added during trial that were not included in the indictment. In doing so, former President Donald Trump was not given a fair chance to prepare a defense to these added charges, thus depriving him of his right to prepare a defense. This was a violation of Donald Trump's right to fundamental fairness and notice of the charges he faced prior to trial. Further, the jury instructions given by Judge Mershon were illegal in that they included these additional charges and allowed for a non-unanimous verdict. A non-unanimous verdict is unprecedented in any felony trial in American jurisprudence, and recently, the U.S. Supreme Court reiterated the necessity for a unanimous jury verdict in the case of Erlinger versus United States. Number three, Judge Juan Mershon made unconstitutional and prejudicial rulings that impacted Donald Trump's ability to present a defense, and that he allowed the prosecutor to use civil penalties and uncharged sexual assault charges against Donald Trump where he had testified in his own defense. This deprived the former president of his right to present evidence in his own defense and was the very basis for the Court of Appeals' reversal of the conviction of Harvey Weinstein earlier this year. Number four, Judge Mershon should have recused himself from presiding over this matter based upon the appearance of impropriety in having contributed to political campaigns regardless of the amount and based upon his daughter's political activities regardless of the ethics opinions he received, which absolved him of any actual unethical <laughs> activity. There are, of course, other appellate issues which, ex which exist in this case, allowing the prosecution to claim federal election law violations without presenting any evidence to support those allegations, not allowing the defense to present a witness regarding federal election law after allowing the prosecution to make the aforementioned statements, and allowing Stormy Daniels to testify, knowing that the prejudicial effect of her testimony outweighed any probative value are several. It is my 
Belief, however, at the ones I have outlined are the strongest issues to be presented on appeal. Therefore, it is my considered opinion, based upon my years of legal training experience, that former President Donald Trump did not receive a fair trial, that Judge Juan Mershon failed in his obligation to be fair and impartial, that Judge Mershon committed a series of errors that necessitate reversal of this conviction. To be direct, I do not believe anyone can reasonably state that former President Trump received a fair trial in New York County Supreme Court from Judge Juan Mershon. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to answer your questions.